here we go. Let's chuck the kayak up on the bank, get into the mangroves and try catch some breakfast first up in the morning. All right, let's go this way. All right, so I have just made it over to this island right here. Now this island is probably about a kilometer long, about 50 meters wide, and there's so many cool animals on it. But the goal for today, what I'm gonna be trying to do, especially first up in the morning, is trying to catch myself some food with my bare hands. Now I've done a few survival videos on this island before, and there is some really cool animals on here. I'll roll you some clips. Look at those magnificent spines coming around the back there. Look at that going for a slide. This is one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had with an animal alone, let alone an echidna. So yeah, first up the mission, catch some food, and then later on tonight, I'm gonna be going night snorkeling. But yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a good day. It's been raining for the past two weeks, so to get weather like this is really cool. Let's try catch some breakfast. Just walking up here, looking for anything that's been trapped in here. Little fish. There's a little school, way too small though. Kind of looking for something that I can actually eat. Just in any of these little pools right here. Found some big mud crabs in here before, but Looks like we might have to head into the mangroves. Yeah, right. All right, let's go. Oh, big muddy. I walked right past that on the way through here. All right, let's get the camera out and see if we can catch him. So what these mud crabs are doing right is they're sitting here in these little shallow pools and they're waiting for the next high tide to come up so that they can cruise around, hunt through the mangroves and over these sand flats where they get most of their food from. But the thing is, I'm doing the same thing and I've found this guy and this mud crab right here is gonna be my breakfast. All right, let's grab the little fella. Look at that. Oh, he is like, come at me, I dare ya. Where do you think you're going, mate? There is nowhere left for you to go. So I'm gonna have to grab you. All right, and let's try to do this without getting bitten because these guys will literally take your fingers off. Just stick my hand underneath the mud. And then we've got him, but he's covered in mud. And there we go. Big mud crab, big male mud crab, should I say. Look at that. If he's 15 centimeters across the shell, this guy's definitely gonna be my breakfast. And take a look at this guy right down here. So that is a big mud crab. And he's eyeing off my face at the moment. And they got one claw. Oh, that's actually sharper than the other. So that's used for cutting and ripping off flesh, where this one over here is used for just crunching. It's so powerful. Literally could take off your finger if it got a good hold of it. Wash this big fella off, then we'll clean him out and just rip it up just like this. It's a bit hard and then the top of its shell will come off. Chuck that to the side. I like to snap it in half like that and you want to clean out all these filters and all this yellow stuff that's just in the middle there. So you just like to get all that stuff out and we can cook it up. Chuck these just there for now. Nice. Cool. Well, we got breakfast and since we've got food already, what I'm gonna be doing soon is kayaking back off this island, heading to a nice creek somewhere, going for a swim and cooking up this mud crab, coming back down here later and going for a night snorkel. But what I thought I'd do, since I'm still on this island, if you comment down below on my videos, I try to reply to every single comment, but it gets a bit much. So what I thought I'd do is do a Q and A in this video and get you guys to ask me the questions. So I'll do half of them on this island and then when we go cook up this mud crab, I'll 
I'll answer the other half. All right, question number one. This is a really good one. What is the craziest memory that I have exploring the wild? So that would take me back to about 2015 or 2016 when I was about 12 years old. We went on a trip over to Indonesia, literally the heart of Indonesia. And we were working with these people called the Bali Reptile Rescue. And what they do is they'll get a call up saying, hey, we've got a big snake in our yard. No matter what the snake is, highly venomous and everything. And they would go remove it because a lot of people in Indonesia will actually kill the snakes. So we were with him for about four days or so and we found so many cool snakes. Went on night walks. In one night, I think we found like 80 or so snakes ranging from beautiful vine snakes to highly venomous pit vipers. I think they were white-lipped pit vipers. I actually nearly stood on one. And we got a call up one day saying, hey, I've got a big king cobra sitting in my backyard. Can you come grab it? So we packed up everything, headed out to this property and king cobras range from like this big up to five meters plus. So normally when people say, hey, we've got a massive king cobra in our yard, it'd be about two meters long, which is not a very big snake. Anyway, we rocked up. This is a four and a half meter long king cobra. This thing is absolutely huge. Our guide caught it, put it in a bag, and we were gonna go relocate it, let it go in a place where it's not gonna have interactions with humans. And he's like, oh, do you wanna play with it for a bit before we let it go? I'm 12 years old in the heart of Indonesia. I not only end up touching this king cobra on the back of the head, but I kissed it on the back of the head, I think like five or six times. This snake is completely wild. They don't have their fangs removed. If I was to get bitten, 100% I'm dead. That was a wild experience. And actually after we left Indonesia, our guide was bitten on the finger and sadly passed away. It just proves like there's a massive anti-venom problem in Indonesia and yeah he was a really great guy and all it takes is a little bite even on the pinky and that's what can happen. And that leads on to another question saying is there any wild stories that you've heard? So he actually told me a story that he got a call up for a huge king cobra. They said this thing was absolutely massive and he was walking through a creek in about waist deep water and he says this snake swam within a meter of him down the creek and this is a guy who's been relocating big king cobras his whole life knows how big a snake is when he sees it he said that day he saw a seven meter long king cobra which none have ever been recorded that big before but he swears by it so yeah i thought that was pretty cool we never know what kind of animals are still out there all right Next question. Have I ever been bitten by a highly venomous snake? I've never been bitten by a highly venomous snake. Heaps of non-venomous snake bites over the years. Got bitten by a few mildly venomous snakes over in Indonesia and the occasional one here in Australia. But it's definitely something that I have to be careful of and I'm very aware of what can happen if I was to get bitten by a snake way out in the bush. What are some bucket list reptiles that I wanna film that I haven't found yet? When it gets a bit colder and these big saltwater crocs start coming out in the banks more, I'm gonna be heading up north on a big road trip up there, so that should be pretty cool. But I mean, thorny devils, king browns, inland taipan, komodo dragons, anacondas, death adders. I have an endless list on my phone of animals and snakes that I would love to find and film, and hopefully we can tick some off within this next year. All right, so now we have some questions about Snake Island. So recently I did a video where I went to this island in the middle of the rainforest, survived on there for 24 hours, and I got heaps of questions about it, which I'm gonna answer now. What is the deadliest snake that lives on Snake Island? So I actually think a fair few of the most venomous snakes in Australia actually live on Snake Island, but the deadliest is the Eastern Brown Snake, which is the second most venomous snake in the world. There's coast Taipans there, death adders, rough scales, Stevens banded snakes, red belly blacks, small eyed snakes, and it's gonna be a lot harder to film videos on Snake Island from now on because these snakes are cold blooded. During the colder months of the year, which it's getting into here in Australia, all these snakes hide away. They'll still be on the island, but they'll just be so much harder to find. Where is Snake Island? So I'm not gonna give away the exact location, but I live on the Sunshine Coast here in Queensland, Australia. So if you can figure it out from that, go ahead. Why didn't I wear shoes on Snake Island and pretty much in all my videos? I've just never worn shoes like walking out into nature since I was really young. I went to a school where up until grade seven you didn't have to wear shoes to school. One of the lessons was swimming in this creek that the school was actually on and I just feel like you connect with nature and the environment that you're in a lot more than when you're 
wearing shoes. What is the biggest snake that I've ever caught? I've caught some really big pythons in Australia. I remember this one, it was probably about nearly three meters long. Really fat python. We actually found it in our house. We left a door open and it got into like the TV room and I found out that it was such a chill snake. Wouldn't try to bite you at all. So I actually slept on the couch that night, fell to sleep with this big three meter python sitting next to me on the couch. Completely true story, literally curled up next to me when I was like 12 years old. Well, we've answered a couple questions. I'm gonna go cook up this mud crab back up at a creek system somewhere. Yeah, let's go. We've just made it down to this creek system at the moment and this is where we're gonna be cooking up this mud crab. I got a little gas cooker, so what I'm gonna do, set it up, start boiling it up and get the crab in there. Enter a couple more questions while we're down at this creek. Pot of salt water. And just chuck it on the top like that. Why don't you have your mates in more of your videos? So although I can devote all my time to filming, my mates actually work like Monday to Friday. So the only way that we'd be able to get any filming done is on the weekends. And normally after they've worked all week, they don't generally want to come out on an overnight or two day survival video out in the bush, which fair enough. But I do love filming videos with my mates. It's always so fun. And I got a cool video coming up where we're going to do a big survival challenge with me and four of my mates. So stay tuned for that. All right. One mud crab claw going in and two. There we go, we'll leave him for 11 minutes. What are my current life goals? At the moment, I'm just so content with filming videos. I'm actually really enjoying it lately, just being able to go on a new adventure each week and film it all, travel to different places. But I've planned out some really cool video ideas that I think could be a TV series maybe one day. But yeah, pretty much just going with the flow, seeing what happens. For anyone wondering what I do when I don't film videos, I'm normally out at a creek system anyway, trying to find animals, playing guitar, writing songs. I love going to gigs and everything. The Australian music scene is sick. So many cool artists. So on the weekends, I normally go see either my mates' bands or different bands playing around the Goldie and Sunshine. Coast. So if you ever see me, come say hi. But yeah, it's the late afternoon at the moment. As soon as it gets dark, I'm gonna be heading down the coast, going night snorkeling, and seeing if I can find any sharks in the rock pools. Not bad. All right. But yeah, I'm glad that even though it has been raining all week and I have been a bit sick that I got to come out and film this video this week for you. It's always good when you get a mud crab. Let's pack everything up and after dark, head down the coast and try to find some sharks. So sadly, the conditions down the coast were way too crazy to go night snorkeling by myself in. So I decided to head to a small section of untouched river deep in the middle of the Australian rainforest. Night snorkeling is one of my favorite things to do. And first up, as soon as I jumped in, I noticed that there were so many eel-tailed catfish that lived in this one pool. Most likely hunting around for shrimp and small fish in the shallows. I also ended up finding this little turtle and he was so chill, it was so cool to see just sitting on the top of my hand doing turtle-like activities. And what I realized is that there was so many freshwater turtles that lived in this one pool. I was hoping that I would run into my favorite species, which I did about five minutes later. And this right here is the broad-shelled turtle. These guys just look absolutely crazy that massively long neck right there that's the reason why it's my favorite species I actually found a few of these turtles throughout the night and it's so cool just following them around in their natural habitat watching them do their own thing but yeah not long after I found a little lungfish cruising around I absolutely love these guys as well they're probably the coolest fish that we have here in this creek system but yeah I cruised around the pool for a bit longer saw some big eels and more turtles and then my torch ran out of battery so I had to head back home but I just just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video i got a heap of cool videos coming soon and yeah i'll see all you legends again in the next adventure cheers guys